in the in a comparison of uh, perspectives with a couple of uh, of moderate Christians and then one creationist at one point, and then subsequent to that, I got a message that uh, Mr. Batman would like to talk to me as well. So we have Mr. Batman on. Uh, would you uh, would you please introduce yourself, sir? Certainly, I'd be happy to. And once again, I do apologize for the confusion. I thought it was uh, supposed to happen at 8 p.m. this evening. Um, I am Mr. Batman. Um, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I believe the Bible is true and correct right from the very first verse. Um, I also am a creationist. Uh, I also love science. I happen to be an uh, elementary substitute teacher, and I teach science and apologetics for all ages. Um, I've been a Christian now for probably about uh, 38, 40 years, something like that, and uh, been online for about 20 of those years. Okay, so um, I'm, a, I'm a little um, remiss on how you can teach both the science and apologetics to mutually conflicting positions uh, that, that, that work fundamentally opposite of each other. And why, how could anybody be a Bible-believing Christian? Ooh, excuse me, um, a Bible-believing Christian. Um, well, in order to know anything to be true, Jesus said in John 14, 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And again, he's actually... a lie. So how do, how do we... You know, what does it have to do with how do we know if anything is true? Okay. That, that, that you have to assume the conclusion of the Bible. I don't understand that. What is your definition of truth? The truth is what the facts are. The truth is whatever we can show to be true, not whatever else we might rather make believe. Okay, and I agree with that. Um, I actually use what's called the correspondence theory of reality, that truth is that which comports with reality. Truth is that which is real. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, which great. Is another reason that Jesus cannot be the truth. Okay. Um, once again, when Jesus said, and I'm all tangled up here, I apologize. Jesus said... Um, in John 14, 6, what I quoted, he's actually quoting the Old Testament where he says, the sum of your word, which would be all of it, is truth and all of your righteous rulings endure forever. And what I'm talking about here in order to do science, this is why I love science. In order to do science, you have to have something called the uniformity of nature. The uniformity of nature is the fact that all of the physical world works under uniform law-like patterns. These uniform law-like patterns are called natural laws, like laws of gravity, magnetism, thermodynamics. These things do exist. We observe them in the physical world, and they don't change over time. So where would something like that come from, according to your worldview? What do you mean, come from? Well, what would be the source of the laws of magnetism, gravity physics, cause and effect. You say everything has to have some property in order to exist at all, right? Well, it does exist, and so that's what we observe. Mm -hmm. The properties are what we observe. That we use right. actually to identify the properties, we use the law of identity, which is also a law of logic. That law of okay. logic, again, is eternal, universal, and unchanging. Okay. So, so why, where do these why come from? Why assume then that that anything had to come from somewhere well once again because i teach science and because we have something called the second law of thermodynamics we know that everything is winding down it was originally wound up to the least amount of entropy and now it's winding down to maximum amount of entropy called heat death and so we know that everything will come to an end so it had a beginning so time space and matter having a beginning requires a cause do you agree with the law of cause and effect, or do you think it had just popped into just, existence I'm just by magic? Now that, now that cosmologists are saying that the universe did not have a beginning, why are you, as teaching science, con, you know, contrasting that to say that it did? And well, again, I'm still the same question unanswered. Sure. Why do you think everything, if, if everything has to have properties in order to exist at all, Mm -hmm. and absolute nothing is not even possible. It's not right. possible for there to be absolute nothing. There's I something that has to exist, I mean, eternally. There has to be something. Mm -hmm. And if something exists at all, then it has to have properties. Mm -hmm. So there had to be some properties, period. So there's not a question here. It, it didn't come from anywhere. So mm -hmm. we know that according to the first law of thermodynamics, because the second law is completely irrelevant right now, mm -hmm. the first law of thermodynamics, of material energy is, of course, eternal. And now that they uh, now that they've determined that um, 
uh, universal wave energy. What is it? Um, I can't remember what they're calling it. Uh, wave properties. I feel I feel a fool. I, I hate having these moments when I can't remember something. But that's this, okay. This has been determined. You, you and I are probably about the same age. About how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 57. I'm 59. Yeah. So, so we have backdoor wave moment. Function. Yeah. Okay. Universal wave function mm -hmm. is also eternal. And uh, what, if there is a singularity, I think is even in question at this point. Or if there was a singularity, then what was it? Still undetermined and largely irrelevant to this. Okay. Well, and again, that's your belief system, but There's I'm talking... A belief system. I don't have a belief system. Please do, do you believe that? Your own, please do not project your own faults onto me. <laughs> a belief system is when you have required beliefs and prohibited beliefs. I have free thought. I, mm. can, I can believe whatever I want. Okay. I'm not going to be punished. I'm not going to face the threat of a fate worse than death if I don't believe something, and I'm not going to get an impossible reward that I have to that I have to, you know, that I'll never get paid because I have to die before I get it. I mean, I, I'm not threatened with either of these. I don't have the sure. stick or the carrot. Okay. I have free thought. I'm free to think whatever I want or not just what I want. I don't even have a choice in it. I am compelled to accept evidence as it is, regardless what I would rather believe. So there's no, I agree with you. I agree with you. And you know what that is? That's Romans chapter 1, starting verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of men, who by their wickedness suppress what? The truth. Now, I ask you about the truth. Except that we're not suppressing the truth. Okay, hang on a second, hang on a second. Again, uh, again, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them, namely his eternal power, his divine nature, his invisible attributes have been made clearly seen, clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and everything that has been made so that we have no excuse. Now, when I'm talking about these things so like truth. Romans 120? Pardon me? Was that Romans 120? Oh, Romans 118 through about 123. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you're you're talking about the the circular reasoning of question begging fallacy, which is ubiquitous throughout religion, okay. and also that passage was not talking about atheists. That was talking about a specific group that were not atheists, um, mm -hmm. and b not believing impossible nonsense for no good reason does not make one wicked. So that's just okay. one of the many I, things. I hadn't said anything about wicked yet. Wrong. You're the one that brought up wicked. You, Actually, you I was talking about science. Well, okay. You mentioned yeah, it in your right. Book. I did in and in so the Romans far, quote. So far, you mm -hmm. haven't talked about science. So okay. far, you've talked to it about a dogmatic adherence to a fairy tale. Okay. So, so. we do observe science. And again, I ta did talk about the uniformity of nature, natural laws, patterns that we mm -hmm. observe in the physical world. The physical Which world is consistent. I'm sorry, sir. I, I, please, can we have a conversation? I listen to Same you. Point. Can you listen to me? Thank you. So, once again, we're talking about the physical world. The physical world decays over time. That is the second law of thermodynamics. This is the most well-established, one of the most well-established scientific laws that we have. So since we know that everything in the physical world decays over time, the physical world cannot be the cause of laws that do not decay over time or do not change over time, such as laws of logic, laws of mathematics, laws of magnetism, thermodynamics, and many, many more. Not to mention the irreducible complexity of the design of the human body. So yes, I'd be happy to talk to you all about science because everything in science actually declares the living God. That's why when you get to that point that where it says, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them, namely his eternal power, his divine nature, hold on to this one, his invisible attributes. Let me ask you, how do you make invisible attributes seen? There's a lot there. Uh, it's imaginary, so you have literally imaginary friend. Okay. Uh, nothing, literally nothing can be known about God. That's that's just it. As I said, you're, you're doing the circular reasoning fallacy, question begging, ubiquitous throughout religion. That's what all religion is based on. Uh, you have the assumed conclusion, no, to summarize what that means, that, you, that everything in nature somehow points to this thing that it definitely doesn't point to, but that you're going to believe in because you have this confirmation bias. You'll accept whatever seems to support it and reject anything that, and you don't even do this consciously, I don't think, anymore. But, but some people definitely are aware of the evidence against them. They just simply ignore it. Actually, and, sir, and I just, used to be an atheist, um, and I used to be an atheist because I thought it was true. Um, just to give you a little bit of background about me, 
Um, my mother I wasn't what, done. Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Yeah. So you, you made, as I said, you made a number of points that were completely irrelevant. Yeah, the, the mention of the uh, second law of thermodynamics, for example, uh, has no relevance that you've explained thus far, given what I've already told you about our position. And then the more important is the irreducible complexity argument, because I have to remind you there was a rather famous court case in 2005 that established that there was not one argument that the intelligent design theorists ever made, the intelligent design creationists, was actually shown to be true. They, I mean, they, they were talking about things that were irreducible. There was no claim that was made by the intelligent design theorists that was that could bear up in court. Every one of them had been disproved before the court case, had been disproved in science before the court case. So you don't have irreducible complexity. You don't have anything indicating your God. What we in fact have is a compilation of fairy tales that have been systematically disproved one after the other. We know there was no Adam and Eve, we know there was no global flood, we know that there was no Tower of Babel, and so on. So how do you how do you reconcile apologetics, which is the systematic making up of excuses to rationalize or justify or otherwise dismiss any and all evidence against your position with the function of science, which works exactly opposite of apologetics? Actually, sir, apologetics is a reasoned defense for what you believe. That, that apologetics word comes from the Greek apologia, and that's what that means. So, again, sir, I used you're to be an atheist. Me. I already understood that. I, I understand, yes, sir, but you're making, you're making it sound like something it's not. I'm wanting it's to give not, people no, I mean, the real like definition. I'm sorry. What I listen to you. Can, can you listen to me for a second? All a reasoned defense is exactly what I was saying about systematic making up of excuses. They are the same thing. Okay, can I speak now? Thank you, thank you very much. You see, sir, um, I used to be an atheist because I thought it was true. Now, uh, again, I didn't want to know any, I, I want to know the truth. I've always been a seeker of the truth. And I realized I was wrong being an atheist because my uncle, who only had a sixth grade education, was able to ask me some very basic biological questions because he raised farm animals. I'm from Eastern Kentucky. Um, and so, again, being asked these questions and being an atheist and being quite intelligent uh, myself, I studied science. I thought, I'm going to prove you wrong, old man. And you know what? After about two years of studying, I realized that, guess what? He was right. Because we do have a designer. Everything is designed. Everything in the biological world uh, is irreducibly complex, right down to bacteria. When you look at the circulatory system of the body, um, uh, the circulatory system, and I know a little bit about this because I've had a heart attack. Uh, again, the circulatory system consists of the heart, the blood, and the veins in the arteries. The heart pumps the blood through the veins in the arteries. The blood takes the oxygen in and the carbon dioxide out. So this is an irreducibly complex system that you have to have all three of these together at the same time before this particular system will work. But it gets worse than that because this system is interdependent upon other irreducibly complex system, such as the respiratory system. That's where the blood gets the oxygen and takes out the carbon dioxide. That uh, respiratory system is interdependent upon the muscular system, which is interdependent upon the skeletal system. And I could go on and on and on. This is why I love okay, science. Well, I would rather you not. I would rather I you not because I want to, I want to address things sure. one at a time. Go right ahead. So when Michael Behe made the argument for the blood clotting cascade, which you are still repeating 15 years after it was disproved in court. I didn't say blood clotting he, cascade. Well, that's I said the circulatory about. system. The circulatory system. Okay. The blood, the heart, mm -hmm. and the veins in the arteries. Which one of those evolved first and how do you know? Well, there's a sequence actually, and as you've just implied. And it was that, strangely that the heart beat evolved before the heart did. Oh my goodness! How do you know that? Because of well, not largely on, on taxonomy and phylogenetics, because there are impulses that are shown in animals that don't have blood, or that don't have any kind of a circulatory system, mm -hmm. but they already have a regulating impulse that matches that of a heartbeat. Hmm. So and you are when you I'm get sorry. into when you get into something like hemochordate uh, worms where you have a you, you don't have a heart necessarily but you have a, a vein channel that also does that convulsion and then the convulsion centralizes into a single unit which is the heart so the, the pulse actually came before the vein which came before the the heart itself even though strangely the, the beat began first so i have to i have to ask you a question you said that your uncle asked you some question that mm -hmm. you couldn't answer and i'm betting that i probably can 
and that it wouldn't be a, a valid reason for you to 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 believe that there was a creator. So what was that? Well, actually, sir, he asked me about information. Specified yeah. complex arrangement of symbols that perform a function or convey a message utilizing a transmitter, a receiver, and an agreed-upon language. Now, of course, he had a sixth-grade education, and he was from the country, so he didn't say it like that. But basically, that's what he was asking me. And so, sir, when we look at this genetic information that's in our bodies that makes us who we are, three billion base pairs... Now, sir, how do you account for this information? How do you account for communication systems such as in our brains? We have a transmitter neuron, a receiver neuron, and the synapse, not, on, not to mention the signal that it goes across that synapse. Which one of those evolved first, and how do you know? You can make all these speculations. Believe it or but not, it, uh, it was consciousness that evolved before any of these Oh, things. I would love to talk to you about that. Where does consciousness come from? Consciousness pre-exists pretty much everything. As it you have so you have a god in, in, you're not an atheist uh no there's no magic so what is consciousness anthropomorphic immortal there's no magical anthropomorphic immortal in my perspective okay great so what so, is consciousness if it's always existed you can find evidence of consciousness in the most basic of living organisms even those but wait a minute you a said it's always existed now mm -hmm. how do you know it's always existed you made a claim i would like for you to back that up uh, there are some philosophers who now hold that a rock... I'm not is, talking to some philosophers, sir. I'm talking to you. Well, you, you made a claim. Would you philosophy. please back it up? You are talking about philosophy, so the, all I can yes, do philosophy is cite philosophers, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm not allowed to cite philosophers on philosophy, then you shouldn't ask me a question then. Sir, we're talking about reality. Now, I could okay, make up anything about... about reality, then. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to. I, again, we're talking about reality, okay, so things getting, that we observe... Getting back to the answer I was trying to give you, okay. you can find evidence of consciousness even in animals, that don't, even in organisms that don't have a brain. And I've shown a number of demonstrations of this. I mean, like, well, uh, one is a prokaryote, oh, excuse me, um, I'm trying to remember what the prokaryote organism is, but it doesn't matter, uh, being engulfed by an amoeba, and it uh, doesn't have any kind of a sensory system at all, but it has a fight or flight response when it realizes, when it set, detects the chemical signature that it has now have been engulfed in an amoeba and tries to escape. So there's, there's an attempt at, at self-defense there even before there's any kind of a concept of a self. Hmm. And then and then famously you have uh, slime mold, which is another single cellular organism that has demonstrated in tests with, with uh, mazes and such that it has a means of reason, that it has a means of, of memory. And this is, again, without any kind of a synapse. So once you have synaptic abilities, which are just heightened, heightened over what the, the, is the base, then you can build a greater consciousness. Hmm. But yeah. didn't you say consciousness has always existed? Yeah. Okay. Always yeah, pre-exists pre the physical yeah, world. But you're not talking always. About you're not talking about 100% for all things. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. That's not always yeah. then. That That's, is always. If you have always some what? degree, if you have always some degree, and then you have increased degree over time, then there's, there's a total always. Always some degree, but wait a minute. Yeah. Why is there something rather than nothing? You see, because from nothing, nothing, is nothing comes. Hang on a second, sir. Hang on a second. Please, please. Will you ask the question? Yes, and yes. I already I, told you the answer. I, I, I'm sorry, it's sir. It's not possible for there to be nothing. But I'm so, unfortunately, your answer doesn't make sense in the real world in real time. Because the, if the, we're going to look at has, things, would you agree that you're using logic right now to try and come to these conclusions? Yeah, necessarily so. So Okay. And so logic, not, where does it come from? Logic is eternal, universal, and unchanging. The law of identity okay. is actually in the Bible. So is the law of non-contradiction, okay. the law of excluded middle. Understand All of these the laws, laws are in the Bible. As a matter okay. of fact, hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Please, please, please. Hang on just a second. So, sir, all of these laws are in the Bible. Now, these laws are exactly. eternal, universal, and changing. Now, due to the law of cause and effect, do you accept the law of cause and effect? I have to wonder about your reference to the Bible being you know, that, that the laws of logic are in there when it contradicts itself so vehemently and so often. But that's that's regardless. Do We're you agree with the law of it. cause and effect? Yeah. Great. Where does that law come from and why does it never change uh, over time? Again, we go back to the same, the original error that you made at the very beginning of this that I corrected at the onset. If something is eternal, it didn't come from anywhere. Well, wait a minute. But... We see the physical world. The physical mm -hmm. world changes over time. Would you agree we see yep. things decay and die over time? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so these laws of logic, are they abstractions of a mind? They are, uh, the laws that we understand them are what humans have worked out, and that's why some of the laws that we worked out turned out to be wrong. Uh, I'm not talking about some of the ones that we worked out. I'm talking about the law of identity, well, the law of non-contradiction, right. the law of excluded the middle. We worked out. Some, some of them we worked out correctly. We've, we've discovered correctly. them. We didn't create them. Is that correct? Right. We discover what it, and some others we, we think are on a discovery, and then it turns out, no, that's not quite. It's, okay. It's but like again, come up with a, it's we're like talking about the laws. Formula. Okay. We're it's talking about the laws of identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. They were discovered, well, we're not created. at all. Hang on a second. We were not talking about that. But wait a minute. You we said were you were using logic, were you not? About? What we were actually talking about was that I asked you a question. You okay. artfully dodged about okay. what was the evidence that that what was the evidence that implied that we had a creator? I'm Information, still specified complex arrangement of symbols, so you, irreducibly complexity, complexity irreducible complexity you, in the, the systems itself. Sir, can I answer the question? May, am am I? Please, may play a, please, please. May I, I already told you. Irreducible complexity is disproved in science before. I'm sorry, sir. I can prove it all day long. And you know what? Uh, it's not difficult it to understand. Absolutely, sir. Not just to me. Not just to me. Why has it never been proven in peer-reviewed science? You actually, teach science. You understand how science Actually, works, right? it, it, uh, uh -huh. it's observable, testable, repeatable. And, and do you and know yet, what we see? We see yet, natural laws. And yet, specified and yet, complexity, and yet specified complexity is still fallacious, never demonstrated in science. So... Entropy does not exist. Is that correct? We're talking about specified complexity now. Does entropy exist? Because everything decays over time, including specified complexity. Because when you copy something, including information, we have something called genetic entropy. Every time you copy um, information, when you have a mutation, that copy is, or excuse me, that mutation is a copying error of the existing mm -hmm. working information. And in order to have a copying error of the existing working information, you must first have a self-replicating system. What was the cause of the first self-replicating system so you can get a mutation and have any of these things that you're talking about? Chemistry? Chemistry, sir, and, and requires chemistry. laws of chemistry that don't change over right. time. Which, so again, where do those laws come from? <laughs> okay, I can see we're not going to go anywhere. If something is eternal, it didn't but come But laws of chemistry are not eternal. They're universal and unchanging. The, they're what, universal what, what and unchanging, but laws of chemistry are not eternal. There are certain what laws law? that are eternal, but there are certain laws okay. that are not eternal. What about chemistry is not, it, what, not uh, eternal? Uh, because God created that to dictate how the physical world works. Okay, so again, the laws of conclusion. logic are eternal, okay. universal, and unchanging, but laws of chemistry okay. are changeable because God can set them aside. God, laws of uh, biology, God, God could set them aside whenever he wanted to actually have Jesus be born of a virgin. He set the laws of biology aside so that could occur, but he cannot set aside the law of logic. Except that the virgin thing was a mistranslation, and that never really happened. Okay, but then we're so, back to truth. Yeah, because so what, what truth is that which comports with reality. Truth is that which is right, real. Right. And so nothing you've said so far has comported reality. Because God... Who's reality? You left, you left at the comport Who's reality? reality Who's reality? The mm -hmm. only reality. Great. There's only one, right? Truth by its very right. nature is exclusive. Is that correct? That's right, which means right. you shouldn't be bringing up things. Truth by its very nature. I, I can I can demonstrate my claim, sir. You know what? You, you I can demonstrate because that God you, because God did a thing God didn't do when somebody mistranslated <laughs> unmarried maiden into virgin. So you you sir, just I'm not, asserted I, I'm just I, I'm actually not using that as an, a reference point okay. for my evidence. Right. I'm actually using science, and then I'm backing up my clearly science not. with clearly not. Oh, you, really? You, you jump to specified Wait a minute. Complexity I'm now. talking about the law of cause and effect. I understand that all of time, um, space, and matter had a beginning. And because of that, anything that has a beginning is known as an effect. Every effect right, must have an adequate cause. Time, just the fourth time correcting the same error. If the universe didn't have a beginning, then... <laughs> but it did, sir. Um, but, okay, well, the physicists are against you. The science is against Actually, you. Actually, no, I sir. The second done. law of thermodynamics cannot be overcome. And I don't know what physicists you're appealing to, to but that's irrelevant. Yeah. The fact but of the matter is we do see over. things yeah, that decay done. over time. I'm sorry, sir. Hello? Hello? I said, I said we're done. I've corrected oh. the, same, I've said the same basic error from your premise four times. I'm not going to do it anymore. We're done. Okay. Have a nice day, sir. Repent or perish.
That was fun. <laughs> oh, well. I tried. Well, boys and girls, I don't know if you are on Facebook or not, but this is Mr. Batman, and I was trying to have a discussion with Mr. R. N. Ra. He was supposedly a pretty famous atheist, but apparently doesn't know too much about science. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish what I wanted to say about that. Again, science requires the God of the Bible. Science cannot be done without the God of the Bible. So when you have somebody like Mr. Raw here who actually states that, you know what, it's just always been there. I'm sorry, that doesn't explain anything. Uh, it's just my axiomatic starting point. Well, then, he, and when I even quoted the Bible as my reference point, because it is the foundation for all truth, wisdom, and knowledge, then he got upset. But then I would ask him, what is truth? Truth is that which comports with reality. Truth is that which is real, in the real world in real time, observably so. If you don't know what truth is, then guess what? You can't know anything. And guess who, who, guess who the truth is? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. John 14, 6, he said he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. In that very statement, he is quoting uh, Psalm 119, verse, um, I believe that's 160. Um, again, where it says, the sum, that's all of it, the sum of your word is truth, and all of your righteous rulings endure forever. So I have a reason why natural laws exist, like laws of gravity, magnetism, thermodynamics, physics, and many, many more. I didn't even get a chance to even ask about the cosmological constants of our universe, such as the strong and weak nuclear force that never change over time, and if they did, our universe wouldn't exist. The force of magnetism and gravity, those are absolutely necessary. They're finely tuned to within one billionth of one degree of accuracy to allow functionality, and guess what? If they ever change, we wouldn't be here to complain about it. Ooh, I have a nice little shiny spot on my head. That's because I was actually working um, on making some t-shirts before. I thought this thing was supposed to happen at 8 o'clock, so I was totally unprepared. Anyway, you don't need to be prepared when you know the truth. You know, if you store the Word of God in your heart, you can trust the Bible. The Bible is completely true. And you know what I want to do right now? I want to pray for Mr. Ra. I want to pray for him that he would get to know the truth, get to know Jesus. Father God, I, I just lift up uh, Aaron Ra to you right now, that, Father, that you would open his eyes to the truth. He got angry with me, Father, not because of my attitude, not because of the way I was speaking to him, because I was trying to be polite, but because he saw your truth in the message. Father, open his eyes, soften his heart. Father, you want none to perish, but all to come to everlasting life. And I want that same thing. I want what you want, Father. I want Aaron Ra to come to everlasting life. Father, thank you for what I know you're going to do through this broadcast and through your word, because I know what it's already done for me. It's blessed me beyond measure. You know what? One of my favorite things to say to people when they ask me how I'm doing, I say, I'm doing better than I deserve. What's that mean? I deserve eternity in hell. Jesus saves from hell. I don't get hell. Why? Because I've gotten the gift of repentance. I've gotten the gift of the Holy Spirit, something I really didn't understand until recently. Woo, that'll preach right there. Boys and girls, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you would like to find out more about me and about how you can find out more about the scriptures, more about science, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm always available. I am Mr. Batman. I am a proclaimer of the gospel. I am a destroyer of false worldviews. I have proof that God exists. And you know what? And I'm happy to share it with you. Thank you very much for listening. Repent or perish. Repent and believe the gospel. Remember, Jesus loves you. Have a great day.